There, um, I'd like to know how you feel about animation. <laughs> It'll never fly, Orville. <laughs> patience and you have to be good at drawing the same picture about a whole lot of times. When you're flipping a flip book, it's going at about 16 or 32 real fast on front of the camera. Well, you don't really have to do flip books on cards. You can do them on a pad of paper. Anything that you can flip, really, you can do it on your math book. A flip book you can do just about any time you get bored of. Because I know you always, most people have a class where the teacher has to go over everything about eight times and you already know it. Well, for the first time when you get it, the rest of the seven times you stay in it, you can just go back over and make a flip book. It's like having a little movie in your pocket. <laughs> you can pull it out and watch it any time. reflect back into the camera. In 16 millimeter film, you have 24 frames per second, and in 8 super 8, you have 18 <laughs> frames per second. And as you film it, two frames each card, it will make it move along the screen. Uh, you take the thing and you put it under and you click it. <laughs> <laughs>
messy. You can drop things all over the place. It's fun. And it's cheap. I mean, that's what you need nowadays. Cheap things. You don't have to get it to sell it. <laughs> no waiting. Just do it and you sell it. is like real life and people but with animation you can do anything you want like your brain is open to do anything <laughs>
The reason I like monster movies is because it helps me escape from reality. <laughs> Yeah. 
that little guy getting squished and eaten up on all the blood. <laughs>
Oh, well, wait, sweet pie, honey bun. Oh, wait for me. Oh, it probably is. You're right. Oh, my gosh. What was that? Oh, I'm beginning to believe something's going on here. Hmm. I think it's going to rain. Oh, I'm going to you. Okay, here we go, uh, lions, uh, yeah, tiger. Uh-huh. Check that off there. Uh-huh, alligators. Uh, let's get on there. Now, now, no making faces. Goodbye. Uh, come on, get on there. Uh, goodbye. That's five of those. Two of those. Uh, yeah, I feel the same about you, too. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see that. Um, uh-huh. Well, well, on we go to the snark. Oh, you first. No, get up, too. Everybody settle down now, here we go. Goodbye, everybody. Off we go. On me, Jabaz. Do you think you're driving me, Noah? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's in the back pocket. I think the elephant has to go to the bathroom. Uh, tell him to lean over the side. I think animation teaches kids about responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs>
Oops. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Skip Alzheimer. Welcome to our lunchtime streaming show. Um, I collect old 16 millimeter films and show them to folks like you. I've been doing this for 25 years or so. Um, doing it electronically since uh, mid March. Uh, it's July. Welcome, July. Please be kind. Um, anyways, uh, that last film was phenomenal. Um, it The nine-year-old in my body got very excited watching it and thinking about the potentials of doing stop-motion animation. And uh, I know as an adult, I don't have the attention span to do it. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> really fascinating film. And I've actually shown this film to kids, and we've done animation projects uh, with, uh, there was a, a school group and a library group where we did, uh, where you basically drew on the film and then we ran it through a projector and, um, you know, it, it was a lot of fun, uh, a lot of work. Uh, kids were disappointed to find out that their piece only lasted like three seconds, <laughs> but um, <coughs> I was able to transfer it and slow it down so they could see it better. But uh, yeah, really awesome film. Um, this next film is also animated and uh, is safety film for kids brought to us by Coca-Cola. So here's Lucky You. Nowhere will you see anything to compare with this the greatest show on earth. Hey, hurry, 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 step right up and see the most unusual injury-defying, death-defying creatures in the universe. Hey, hurry, 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 the, the amazing sensation, the scientific wonder, the one and only Shootabus. Come and see, come and see the Burnabus, the defying wonder of the world. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, see the hurdling, hurdling hit of us. The unheardable hindrance to highway happiness. Hey, hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, and learn the secret of the tantalizing tent of mystery. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. Well, you'll certainly have to admit, this is a strange assortment of, uh, <laughs> well, they are creatures. Look at that crazy cut of us. Not even scratched. Sure, but look closer. Steel for skin. No wonder it doesn't have to worry about getting cut by open jackknives or jagged metal. But take a human being's skin. Soft, flexible, thinner than tissue paper. That's why a human being has to play it safe. Always cuts away from himself. If the knife slips, no damage is done. He keeps his fingers well away from the edge of a knife, behind the blade, behind the business end, or edge of any sharp tool. And he knows there's no better place for a sharp tool when it's not being used than in a rack, up and out of the way. And what's good for tools in a workshop is also good for knives in kitchens. In fact, for anything sharp or pointed, use properly, store properly. That's the way to protect tissue paper skin. Lucky cut of us. No cuts, no punctures, no need to remember safety rules about the use of knives. Uh-oh. Well, what do you know? No better than that old cracked egg, Humpty Dumpty. Now, when it comes to falling, there's no luckier creature than this old windbag, the fall of us. He's light and he's bouncy, and he's supposed to have a built-in gravity resistor. Gravity resistors we know nothing about. Gravity we do. Take a boy up in a tree, oh, about 20 feet, about as high as an upstairs window of a home. Falling from this height 
he'd land at a speed of 25 miles an hour. Why? Gravity. That'd be just like going as fast as he could on his bike and then crashing into a solid brick wall. And funny thing, sometimes a one-foot fall can be just as bad as a 20-foot fall. Ah, so what and so why care, says our flouncing friend. It can well feel this way about falling. It can bounce. So, it never gives a single thought to the dangers of standing on a wobbly rocking chair, or climbing up on rickety boxes, or using a stepladder with a broken step, or stepping on a dead branch. Yes, lucky fall of us, it can float in air. But we can't. We have weight. Another thing, we have bones, about 200, all shapes and sizes. Treat them rough, and they crack or break. No wonder a human being is careful about climbing, whether a few feet off the floor or quite a few feet off the ground. What he stands on has to be sturdy and no chance of it slipping. For instance, a ladder is safe for climbing only when the feet are firmly anchored or when someone holds the ladder. Sure, it's simple. What safety rule isn't? Then there's this tricky thing called balance. Just a matter of keeping weight evenly distributed. Now, as long as this boy stands straight, he's safe. Now he's slightly off balance, and he'd better be careful. Leans way out, and he's in trouble. He's top-heavy. He loses his balance. One crash landing. So instead of reaching way out, a human being moves the ladder to a new spot and leaves flying through the air to the birds. But this business of keeping one's balance is just as important on the ground as it is off the ground. That's why this sort of thing spells danger in capital letters. Same here. Yes, big things as well as small things. Same with school books a toy truck, a baseball bat, one of Dad's garden tools. Whatever it is, if it's lying around where people walk, it's dangerous. Of course, all this is a bunch of nonsense to the fall of us who has never tripped over anything in its life. Couldn't if it tried. Lucky? Well, not entirely. But now take the shoot of us. Things that shoot don't seem to bother it at all. But why should they? This creature with cross ventilation is already 72% nothing. A few more holes? He should worry. Now, as we all know, shooting things pack a lot of power. This kind of power can be mighty rough when it lands on human beings who are made up of complicated and delicate organs, tubes, and tissues. That's why human beings make such a to-do over handling and using firearms the safe way. That's why before using a gun, this fellow learns from someone who really knows the right way to handle it. Same with loading, aiming, all the safety rules every good sportsman should know. He shoots only at targets, except when hunting, and only when and where no other people are around. That gun is always loaded, as far as he is concerned. And that one rule alone can save a lot of embarrassment and possible injuries. Fool with someone else's guns without permission? Mm-mm. Not even just to show a friend. Yes, to be safe, a human being has to remember a lot of rules, while our air-conditioned friend doesn't have to remember a single one. But while guns can't hurt it, 
Look what heat does. Nothing left but the holes. Let's move on to the Bernabas. Heat leaves it absolutely cold. <laughs> well, cool anyway. It's made of asbestos. Fuzzy, but it just won't burn. But there's nothing unburnable about human beings. We can get burned, and badly. From anything as hot as 140 degrees, in fact. This is just a little hotter than water out of most hot water faucets, 140 degrees. Yet steam runs around 212 degrees. Cooking grease gets up to 400 degrees. A lighted match up to 2100 degrees. Burning clothing as high as 2000 degrees. And only 140 degree heat can burn skin seriously. So pots and pans are always turned so handles won't get bumped. That way the hot stuff stays in the pans. You take hot pads, great little inventions, the right thing to use for handling hot dishes and pans. So the rule for any tool or implement using heat is simply treat with respect and handle with care. That goes double when dealing with open fires. The only safe fire is one that is completely under control and one that stays where you want it to stay. The only good matches to carry are safety matches or matches kept in a closed metal container. Small campfires are better than big ones, better to cook over, take less wood, and a lot easier to put out. Now, as every scout knows, if you break a match in two before throwing it away, you can be sure it's out. And just as with matches, the only kind of campfire to go off and leave is one that is out, completely out. Yes, the Bernabas is fuzzy, but lucky. Can't get scalded, can't get burned. But my, oh my, does it go to pieces fast when it gets in front of a moving car or truck. Now this cocky, clangy creature continually makes connections with conveyances and no cause for concern. Lucky Hittabus with its spring protector. This human beings don't have. So keeping a sharp lookout for cars is the number one safety rule for pedestrians. Look at it this way. It takes a pretty good track man to run a hundred yards in anything close to 10 seconds. Yet most human beings can cover a short distance like this in a second or two. Same with this distance. Now, two seconds doesn't give much time to look out for approaching cars. And not much time either for a driver to screech his car to a stop. So, rather than try to beat a signal light as it's changing, smart human beings wait for the green and then cross the street. And even when the light is green, it's safer to walk rather than run. Particularly on corners where there are no traffic lights. You can keep a better lookout for any car that may zip around the corner. And walking is a good idea on crowded sidewalks, too. Same with going through special playgrounds for small children. The safe rule is walk, don't run. And no matter how many runs score, the smart ball player stops and looks both ways before shagging a ball. With none of these rules to remember, the Hittabus can be carefree and careless. In a way, it's pretty lucky. And in a way, it isn't. No, for luck to really count, it's got to be all the way. It's got to be 100%. And not a single one of these creatures can claim that. Certainly not the Cutabus. Fallabus either. Shootabus? Mm-mm. Burnabus? Hardly. Hittabus? No. Sure, they all had a little luck, but a little luck doesn't go very far. Actually, there is only one kind of creature who can be completely safe, and that creature is you. Yes, lucky you. 
You are cuttable, breakable, puncturable, burnable, hurtable, drownable. Yet you can be 100% lucky because you can think. And stopping to think can prevent accidents. For instance, say you're about to take a dive off a strange dock. And you're not sure about how deep the water is or what's on the bottom. When you stop to think, you don't take that dive. The same with deep water swimming, if you're a rookie or even a fair swimmer. When you stop to think, you stay in safe water with your buddy. Say you get the notion to fool around in a canoe or a boat, maybe feel like switching places. When you stop and think, you change your mind and stay put until you get back to the dock or shore. And this business of pulling up close behind a truck. What if the truck stops suddenly or slows down fast to turn a corner? When you ask yourself these questions, you always keep a good distance back. One out of every four pedestrian injuries is caused by people crossing streets between intersections. Whenever you stop to think of this, you change your mind and go down to the next corner to cross. Funny, the better you're dressed, the more tempting it can be to climb around on buildings under construction. But whether in Sunday or old clothes, the speed with which you hit the ground is the same. When you stop and think, you always change your mind about climbing and move on. And this silly business of taking a dare. When you stop and think of who stands to get hurt, you always figure it's not worth the risk. Anyway, what sports star ever takes a dare? All of a sudden, it may seem like a good idea to, to throw something, say a rock. Where will it land? How can you be sure? Even big league pitchers throw wild once in a while. When you think about it a second, you drop the rock and go on your way. Take aiming a gun at someone in fun. When you stop and think of the accidents that have happened just this way, you always kick that silly idea out of your mind, fast. It boils down to this. Whenever you stop to think, you always prevent an accident. And unlike the cutabus, the fallabus, the shootabus, the burnabus, and the hitabus, who are only lucky in a very small way, and who never think, you can be completely lucky. And all because you can think. Thank you, Coca-Cola bottler, my Coca-Cola bottler, uh, and uh, Jam Handy. Um, this is definitely a film that was made, sponsored by Coca-Cola, and it was distributed to schools, to be shown in schools, and so it's a, it's literally a sponsored film. Um, so it has some information, uh, and then I'm sure they had pamphlets, I'm sure that Coca-Cola, you know, this was their public affairs thing that they could distribute and also distribute advertising about coca-cola um jam handy of course amazing filmmaker his company made lots and lots of industrial and sponsored films over the years and so this was a glorious example of that we showed one yesterday ideas in action which was a over-the-top roller coaster ride about westinghouse products and how great they were it was ratcheted up it was so good um, yeah, so, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that has contributed to buy me coffee. Um, there's a link to do that here. I'm also kind of raising a campaign to buy some shelves and, uh, it says $20 per shelf. Uh, basically I said it was $16 a shelf and that's true, but 
they don't have an option for donating $16. So $20, if I can get four shelves, like $80, that pays for a shelving unit. So I just said, well, I just rounded up 20 bucks. Anyways, you do not, please do not feel bad if you can't contribute. Times are tough. Um, I appreciate you contributing in other ways, like by liking what we show, by uh, commenting, by sharing, getting more friends to watch. Um, that's how you can contribute. And so uh, very much appreciate. Uh, we've got almost three shelving units, and we're trying to do five by the end of the week. Um, so thank you so far for everybody who has contributed. It means a great deal. Um, all right. So we're going to go from technically awesome to kind of weird. So this is also promotional stuff. This is from a company that I got a bunch of films. Well, I got a bunch of films in Memphis, a bunch of educational films, and then also some porn. And then also this, uh, a bunch of these advertising reels, 60 millimeter advertising reels, uh, that were shown in theaters before a movie was shown. So these would, this is a demo reel that would, the salesperson would take to a local business and say, this is the type of business that we do. We can come into your business and we can shoot and we can create an ad that you'll show in a theater. Um, so advertising in theaters is as old as theaters, to be honest. Um, so this is, it, it says BFA demo reel. I don't think it's been color corrected, but I, I figured you guys would dig it. So here it is. BFA demo reel. Enjoy. I think it has a little bit of a countdown here. Hi, this is Professor Personality, Percy for short. My subject today is fashion and the Roman male. Projectionist, roll the film, please. As you can tell by the tall green sign, we're at Wheeler's in downtown Rome the fashion forum for Roman males. Every workday, the men of Rome can be seen coming and going at Wheeler's. They come to see what's new from the finest coutiers of the empire. They come to see what will be worn at the marketplace, the games, the festivals. They come to exclaim at the enormous diversity and array of splendid apparel. And of course, they come to wear it. Your assignment for tomorrow is to do as the Romans do. Visit Wheeler's Men's and Boys Wear, 411 Broad Street, the fashion forum for Roman males. I'm sure you've been in Manor Pharmacy many times, but I'd like to point out a few thoughtful services you may not be aware of. For example, did you know the ladies behind the cosmetic counter are trained cosmeticians? Fully qualified to advise you on skin care and beauty aids. And do you know the prescription department keeps careful records of your prescription purchases? Yours for the asking at tax time or for medical insurance claims. A handy service of the professional prescription department at Manor Pharmacy. Free gift wrapping is another handy thing to remember when you shop Manor Pharmacy's gallery of beautiful gifts for all occasions. These thoughtful services, teamed with a multitude of well-stocked departments, make Manor Pharmacy the first place you should think of for all your sundry needs. Manor Pharmacy, 1207 Watson Boulevard, your full-service pharmacy with 24-hour prescription service. Turner's in the Northwood Mall in downtown offers a new world of shopping pleasure. You'll find the latest fashions in both ladies' and men's clothes, shoes, and accessories. You'll also find courteous clerks, pleasant surroundings, and quality merchandise at reasonable prices. Ladies know that they can outfit themselves from head to toe. Lingerie, purses, sportswear, and a wide selection of both daytime and evening dresses. Fashion-conscious women know that Turner's is the complete store. Turner's also has a wide selection of men's suits, sport coats, and slacks, and shoes and shirts. For the man who demands both high style and quality,
Turner's features suits by Hart, Schaffner, and Marks. Remember, Turner's two convenient locations, in the Northwood Mall, open six nights till nine, and downtown at 116 South Monroe. Turner's, doorway to fashion. This is First Federal Savings in Warner Robins, where your friends Pete and Repeat are rapidly becoming men of substance. It all started when Pete told Repeat about his payroll allotment savings plan. Out of each civil service check, Pete would have a certain amount deducted and sent right into First Federal Savings. When Repeat saw the interest that Pete was getting on his insured savings, he too wanted a piece of the action. At First Federal Savings, 1570 Watson Boulevard, open till 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. This year's bride, beautiful, isn't she? And thoughtful, too, because she's selecting her wedding gifts at Whiting's, everybody's every occasion gift headquarters. This year's bride knows her guests will be glad they can find the practical, beautiful gift she wants most at Whiting's. The helpful people at Whiting's are also ready to help plan the best of all possible weddings, beginning with the engraved invitation, right on through a perfect reception, dressed for the occasion from Whiting's famous party room. But Whiting's isn't just for brides. Whiting's offers unusual gifts for every occasion, plus a complete line of office equipment and business supplies. Whiting's, everybody's every occasion gift headquarters, 1500 Watson Boulevard. There's no season on high fashion footwear at Crumpton Shoes in Warner Robins and Perry. The store where the entire family always finds the perfect fit, the latest styles in America's finest footwear. Like Buster Brown, for instance, a child's first choice in foot comfort. Expertly fitted by personable employees who know your child's feet like the back of their hand. For those who haven't heard, Crumpton's also specializes in expert fitting of orthopedic prescriptions. Crumpton's, fitting fashions for everyone. Treat your feet like two of the family at Warner Robins' oldest and most respected shoe store, Crumpton's in Stantham Plaza, Warner Robins, and in Perry. First in family footwear. McDonald had his farm, he had lots of farm animals, as we all know. Now the McDonald's of Warner Robins have their farm over on Green Street, but only one farm animal, the chicken. Crispy fried chicken with its everywhere crunch crunch goodness. Not frozen, but fresh, down on the farm goodness, packed just for you, or for you and all your friends. They'll even cater your biggest get-togethers. And these McDonald's have added their own deep water pond, fully stocked with half a dozen of your favorite deep sea dishes, and one great freshwater favorite, catfish. All the catfish you can eat. This and every complete dinner at Old McDonald's Farm is rounded out with fresh from the oven, honey dripping biscuits. And pie, more mouth water and pies than you can shake a stick at. And like everything else at the farm, they're made right there. Fresh, old-fashioned, down-on-the-farm food from Old McDonald's Farm, 1325 Green Street. Red carpet service. For hundreds of years, the unmistakable symbol of deference to very important people. That's why Barker's, downtown Warner Robins, red carpets the past to every home they decorate and furnish. Because you, every one of you, is a VIP at Barker's. Barker's knows that your home is truly your castle, your haven for comfortable family togetherness, a landmark expression of your own tastes and personality. That's why Barker's has chosen to extend a personal, unique service to their VIPs. Total and imaginative home decorating. Unique because you actually live in your Barker design furnishings for a time. What you're happy with, you keep. The rest is returned to Barker's outstanding collection of furnishings selected from the finest the world has to offer. 
Isn't it time you received the red carpet treatment? See Barker's in Warner Robins. You'll be glad you did. If you like pretty things, but not the pretty prices you have to pay, you should pay a visit to Harris Fabrics, distributor of Simbaret bras and girdles. They have over 500 beautiful fabrics. Practically all are easy wash and wear materials, and many patterns in the new polyester fabrics. All at special discounts for students, schools, or any fraternal or religious organization. Pick your patterns from Simplicity, Futterick, or Vogue, and step into money-saving style at Harris Fashions, 4981 Austell Road, three miles south of the theater. This is Sanitone, the world's most recommended dry cleaner. Sanitone restores your clothes, natural softness, makes them look brighter. In short, Sanitone puts new life into all your cleaning. Sanitone is yours exclusively at Horton's Laundry and Cleaners, where we take as much care with your clothes as we do our own. Being a full-service laundry, we handle everything from living room drapes and rugs to fine finished shirts and dresses even special care items like evening and wedding gowns. Then, before you get your cleaning, each item must pass a careful inspection. For your added convenience, Horton's drive-in service for easy pickup and delivery. Or just give us a call, and we'll be happy to pick up and deliver right at your door. We're your laundry and cleaners. Horton's, 1202 McCall Boulevard. <laughs> This girl is learning the skills that can bring her an income of $150 a week or more. She's a student at Williams School of Hair Fashion, the only school in Columbus instructed by a member of the Georgia Hair Fashion Committee. In just nine months, she'll prepare herself for a high-paying job in a variety of fields from high fashion hairstyling, wig styling and shaping, to color technology and facial cosmetics. At the same time, she'll learn the valuable skills of good salesmanship and personal grooming. And upon graduation, the school guarantees her job placement in her new career. Williams School of Hair Fashion even offers advanced training for teaching professionals. Whatever your age or work experience, you can prepare now for a high-paying career in the wide-open fields of cosmetology through Williams School of Hair Fashion, 1241 First Avenue in downtown Columbus. So as you probably guessed, most of those were in Warner Robins, Georgia. I'm tempted to see if there's a Facebook group for that uh, community and post all these there and watch people go nuts. Um, it's, uh, I, I love, you know, Main Street, uh, small town, USA, circa 1970s, um, late 60s. Uh, it's really great, the retail experience. Uh, I certainly did that all. As a kid, I would walk to our little downtown, our one block downtown, and go into the bookstores and the knickknack stores and the library and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it brings back memories. Fond memories. This next film is a office courtesy film. Uh, and there's, there's different ones in this series. Uh, this one is Meeting the Public. So this is... You dealing with the public as a retail person or a receptionist or, um, you know, whoever. This is before telemarketers. So, meeting the public. Enjoy. Meeting the public, whether it's in person or by telephone, is an important part of your job. It can be pleasant like this. Or it can be like this.
Hello, Mom. No, I've just got here. Golly, you look tired. Don't you feel well, Barbara? Oh, I feel terrible. Well, what's the matter? You sick? No, it isn't that. I've decided to quit my job. Oh, what happened? Is it your boss? Oh, no, you know I like him. Well, then, the company. No, the company's all right. It, it isn't that. It's, it's the people that come into the office. They're so rude and inconsiderate. It's just more that I can take day in and day out. Why, meeting people is the thing I like most about my job. I think it's fun having new people come into the office all the time. Well, I... Oh, the water's boiling. It was as simple as that. For Ruth, meeting the public was pleasant because she enjoyed people and greeted them with a smile. For Barbara, meeting the public was tiresome and unpleasant because her attitude was cold and uncooperative, sometimes even antagonistic. You know, when I first started, I felt like you do, Barb. But I found out how wrong I was. What do you mean? I found out it wasn't really the other people I was seeing. It was a reflection of myself. I was cross with them. They were cross with me. Oh, it's not as simple as all that. You'd be surprised. I found out that if you're nice to people, they're usually nice to you, too. Well, the people in my office are different, and I'm simply not going to stand for it any longer. You're tired now, Barb. I know just how you feel. Let's talk about it again later on. It's no use, Ruth. Really, I've made up my mind. I'm going to start looking for a job tomorrow. I'll cut the table. Oh, here, I'll do it. Everything else is ready. Why don't you go in and sit down and rest for a few minutes? Well, thanks. I think I will, if you really don't mind. What you need is some good hot food in you. to make you feel better. Oh, it's not that, Ruth. I know I'm tired, but it's more than that. A reflection of myself? I don't see how it could be. After all, what do they expect? I've got my work to do. I can't stop and pass the time of day with every person who wants to strike up a conversation. <sighs> it isn't my attitude that's wrong. It's the people who come into that office. I'm going to look for another job. Franklin's a busy man. You can't expect to walk right in on him and get a job. I bet that secretary's forgotten we're here. Hey, look at all the other people waiting. You see that man? He's one of Mr. Thompson's biggest customers. I have an appointment with Mr. Franklin. Dressed like that? Yeah. Do you? Well, I doubt if he'll be able to see you at all. I see. She's brushing him off as though he were a nobody. I guess his shabby clothes have a fool. I wish she'd answer that telephone. It makes me nervous to have it ring. Well, come to think of it, I let it ring often enough myself. Hello. Yes. Who? Yes, this is Mr. Franklin's office. No, he's busy. No. No. Oh, I don't know who's in charge of that. Oh, yes, I suppose so. Oh, if you want to. State 4059. Oh, 95. Well, which is it? 59 or 95? Oh, all right. Yes? Can I see Mr. Franklin, please? What did you want to see him about? I'd like to discuss that with him, if I may. Is it about a job? No, I represent the Bragdon Company. You selling insurance? We're one of your company's suppliers. Well, I'll see if he'll see you. She should really find out what his business is, but not like that. She should do it tactfully. Well, I guess those questions were kind of blunt. 
Do you think she'd know who the Bragdon Company is? Mr. Franklin isn't in. He isn't? I said he isn't in. Thank you. He isn't in? Well, then why has she got me sitting here waiting there? I don't think she told that man the truth. Well, I'm going to find out whether she told the truth or not. Right this minute. Young lady, miss, miss. <gasps> to wake you, Barb. Dinner's ready. Oh, that's all right. I was having a nightmare anyway. A nightmare? I hope it wasn't too gruesome. <sighs> Help me? Yeah. Ruth, you know what you said before about seeing the reflection of ourselves? Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to try it. That's fine, Barb. I know you'll find that if you're nice to people, they're usually nice to you, too. Now, how about some dinner? Gee, I didn't realize I was so hungry. In the days that followed, Barbara did her best to acquire a genuine interest in people. For she found that smiles are effective only when they're genuine. She carefully practiced the first basic rule in meeting the public, remembering and using names. Oh, yes, Mr. Borden. I'm sure that Mr. Thompson will be glad to see you. Of course, Mr. Farnsworth. I'm sorry, Mr. Pratt. She formed the habit of tactfully getting the name and business of every visitor and of introducing him in a pleasant, gracious manner. Mr. Thompson, this is Mr. Markham of Allied Manufacturing Company. How do you do, sir? She learned to anticipate Mr. Thompson's needs and have ready for him material he might require during an interview. When it became necessary to interrupt an interview with information from Mr. Thompson, Barbara wrote out the message. It wasn't all easy. She made some mistakes, of course. She learned, too, that it's a mistake to argue with visitors. You have an appointment at 10.30. Mr. Thompson should be with you in just a few minutes. Would you mind waiting over there? As different kinds of situations came up, Barbara discovered the proper way to handle them. One of these was the inquisitive caller. Well, I suppose you girls managed to keep busy. Yes, there's always enough work to do. There's a rumor that the firm closed a big deal with Marshall and Company. Is that so? Yes, a five-year contract. Know anything about it? I can't say that I do. However, if you'd like to see Mr. Walker, that's all. No, no, all. it's perfectly all right. It's not that important. Yes, Barbara learned to be on guard against the visitor who asks too many questions. To handle him tactfully, but firmly. She learned how to turn away a visitor firmly without making an enemy of him. Can I make an appointment now for some time? Next week? Anytime. I'm free anytime. Well, perhaps I can phone you when an appointment would be more convenient. I have your number. Well, all right. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. She learned good telephone manners, like answering promptly, using the caller's name. Mr. Thompson's office. Yes, certainly, Mr. Hunt. and getting the message right. She got into the habit of keeping a waiting visitor informed so that he'd know he wasn't forgotten. Mr. Thompson will see you very soon, Mr. Greenleaf. Oh, thank you. And of course, she became more conscious than ever of the importance of neat, simple clothing in the office. Above all, what Barbara acquired in the days that followed was a real understanding and liking of people. She found that smiles are contagious, that courtesy begets courtesy. And because of her changed attitude, the duties which had once been a nightmare for her became instead 
the pleasant and exciting experience of meeting the public. You guys didn't expect that twist in there, in the, the dream sequence, or nightmare. That's great, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I have other films in that series. I need to kind of look and see and if they're as interesting and dramatic as this one. All right, so um, what do I want to see? All right, so a couple, maybe it was last week, uh, I showed uh, Doomsday for Pests. And I got that film. It was a Sherman Williams film about their version of DDT that they were trying to promote uh, at all the Sherman Williams dealers. And it was an amazing animated film. And it showed this woman spraying DDT on every inch of her house, painting it, uh, putting it on the pet, on the dog, um, putting it under the couch, on the piano, everywhere. <laughs> um, so that reel came with another a promotional film uh, for another Sherman Williams product called Weed Be Gone, which I'm sure was equally as horrifying and hazardous. Uh, I can't remember what the active chemical ingredient is in this, but um, here's Goodbye Weeds. <laughs> was long ago. Things were rough at the dawn of history, and Henry was no exception. But something else was even tougher than Henry. That's right, weeds. Personal pride and the fact that he has to get home makes Henry do something about them, or try to. <laughs> totem pole of progress. Life wasn't much fun in your day, was it? Not nearly so much fun, for example, as it was later on, about the time the Hanging Gardens of Babylon were busy becoming one of the seven wonders of the world. By now, civilization had progressed to where local bigwigs couldn't for the life of them see how things could possibly be any better. One local citizen, however, was rather sour on that idea. He was Henry Smith, the 31st, chief hanging gardener. But the hanging gardens were no bed of roses for him. Ah, good old progress. But alas, no progress in the weed department. The yank em out and hope technique was the same as it was back in the caveman days. Then came the brave new world across the sea. Settlements marking monumental steps forward in man's development. Came to Henry the 91st, a man of pious temperament, slow to anger, and gentle as a dove. the good old days. Gone, all gone. And we can't shed a single tear over their going, for life today is so much more pleasant, easier, happier. Today is modern, new, progressive. This is the gracious age, the age of pleasant, easily run homes, of 
push-button cooking of automatic devices one after another to take the drudgery out of necessary chores. Yes, it's good to be alive today. Alive and relaxed in the sun. Relaxed and playing in the sun. Like this child of nature, Henry the Hundred and First. He lives in a fortunate age indeed. The problems of yesterday are all behind him. Well, most of the problems. Saturday afternoons. This is Saturday afternoon. I play golf. What about the lawn? The lawn. The lawn we so proudly own, my pet, is spawn of the devil. It's a gigantic inhuman plot against me and my good works. It is living, breathing proof that black magic stalks abroad today. To make myself perfectly clear, it kills me. I play golf! Hi, Mac. Afternoon. Your ball. Oh, thanks. <laughs> A little off my game today. <laughs> you should try loosening your grip. It's very helpful sometimes. Oh? Like this. Hey, hey, watch it. Oh, I'm very sorry. Very, very sorry. Hey, Mac, what is this stuff, anyway? Weed no more. The question still stands. What is it? It's a weed killer. Oh, one of those things. I wouldn't say exactly that. Meaning what? Meaning this. This particular preparation really works. Hmm? See any weeds on my fairway? Come to think of it, no, I, I haven't recently. You mean that this stuff... I mean, you don't have to pull weeds to poison the grass, or, or, or that is, uh, uh, this weed, what do you call it, uh, it's the whole works? Weed no more, the whole works. Mm. Dr. Smith, hmm? your ball. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> thanks. Bad round today. I didn't expect to break a hundred. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> Thanks for the lift home. Come in a minute. How do you do it? How in the world do you do it? My yard. Oh, come on. Take a look. That's all there is to it. Did the whole job, the whole works. Hmm. Well, Mac was telling me about this, this weed no more. Well, just what does this stuff do? How does it work? Well, it uh, causes the weeds to commit suicide. I see. Would you mind repeating that? Well, this is not just another weed killer. It works where others fail. You see, industrial and university scientists worked out weed no more and developed it on the principle that it can be more effective to make a weed kill itself than to poison it. And when I say worked, I mean worked. 
from a theory to a proved, tested product was no overnight step. Years of research went into the job, hundreds on hundreds of experiments, large sums of money, and the result is literally a miracle of science. The lazy man's way of weeding. A surefire killer that works like magic, making weeds shrivel up and die. One that definitely does not kill or injure common lawn grasses. A sure acting preparation that starts to work immediately on contact. One that means sure death to a list of weeds as long as you're off. And as I say, Weed No More does all this by literally forcing the weed to kill itself. Here's what happens. When the Weed No More spray comes in contact with the leaves of a weed, it is quickly absorbed. The leaves curl and twist as the spray affects the entire plant system. The roots are weakened, the leaves wither and the color fades. Soil bacteria and fungus move in and the roots begin to rot. Soon the weed is disintegrated completely gone, root and all, leaving only a hole in the ground. Results begin to show within 24 hours. Within a week, brown or dark spots appear. Another week or two, the weed is completely shriveled, died and rotted away, gone for good. It can never reappear later. Weed No More is really magic, modern magic. It works on many weeds, not just a few. Broadleaf plantain, for example. Plantain is affected in the same way over a like period of time. of ragweed is more emphatic and the result inevitable. And so on down the line. Black Medic. Poison Oak. Bindweed. Dock. Mustard. Thistle many, many others. Sounds like you know a lot about it. Well, I like to know what I'm getting for my money. How do you mix it? Two tablespoonfuls and a gallon of water. Weed no more, my lady. Oh, weed no more. Me. Auction sale? Movie prize. Oh, I know. Volunteer fire department. You, my pet, married a man of vast discernment, sound judgment, and rare acumen. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean this time? No doubt you've heard of DDT, jet propulsion, the atom bomb, in short, the better known wonders of the modern world. No doubt. Mm. I have here the prize of them all. Step up, ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Don't be afraid. Presto. Henry, not more hair tonic. And with a spray. This pet is not hair tonic. It's Weed No More, designed especially to take the back break out of lawn care, sweeten the disposition, and strengthen the soul. It's also designed to save time. Leave us have at it, shall we? 
weed killer. Huh? That little bit for this big lawn. That little bit for this big lawn. Just watch Pappy. Only two tablespoons to each gallon of water. No. Yes, potent stuff. Highly concentrated. And one dollar buys enough to treat the average lawn. Now, mix it well. And now, let us spray. Wherever the weeds are. If the whole lawn's weedy, spray it all. If there are only weedy patches, spray the patches. Logical, huh? Breezy, breezy, go back, breezy. Oh, let him come, let him come. This modern miracle, as the man called it, hurts only weeds. Absolutely harmless to animals, children, uh, hen-pecked husbands, and beautiful wives. Henry, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> Don't try to answer, Henry. You just go on spraying that lawn of yours. Let Weed No More do the rest. Weed No More won't fail you, any more than it failed on the immaculate turf of the famed Canterbury Golf Club in Cleveland, scene of two national open golf tournaments. It will live up to your fondest expectations, just as it does for the owners of beautiful estates from coast to coast. It will do the job for you as thoroughly as it does for well-known educational centers where carefully maintained grounds add charm and loveliness to their campuses. As solid a job as it does for municipal governments who have found that clean, grassy parkways pay off in civic pride and reputation, not to mention motoring pleasure and lovely, clean-turfed country areas like this add to man-made beauty, utility and profit to nature's gifts. That's right, just leave it to weed no more from now on. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Except, of course, Wait a little while, but not for long. At the end of only one week, you'll see that weeds are really on their way out, and a lovely lawn is on its way in. End of week number two, and things look even better. It won't be long now. of the third week, complete success. And so at long last, the happy ending comes to Henry Smith in his battle against weeds. For the first time since the dawn of history, he's completely the victor, easily, effortlessly, economically. It took centuries, but he finally got there. For now, it's goodbye weeds. I called it Weed Be Gone. It was not. It's Weed No More. Totally different. Um, somebody dug up a lawsuit against Sherwin-Williams in 1951, and um, essentially they got sued because of um, somebody was using it on crops, and it was killing lots of things that it supposedly wasn't supposed to be killing. 
Uh, and Sherwin Williams' salespeople were like, yeah, you can use it on anything. And nope. So uh, look it up. Sherwin Williams' uh, Weed No More uh, lawsuit. Um, and yeah, this was not a healthy product. It's a, you know, it's a herbicide. And so it has some toxicity, uh, especially reproductive health toxicity uh, for men. Uh, it might be why that couple didn't have any kids. Um, it's it's a wonderful little time capsule, 1946. Um, you know, what the man aspired to be and the woman aspired to be at that time. Still kind of that Hollywood glamour. Um, but uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I will see you tomorrow, hopefully. Um, we'll have more films to watch, obviously. Because I got thousands, 27,000, um, and more almost every day, basically, batches show up. And so at one point, I was getting like averaging five a day. I don't think that's, I'm at that point now, but it's at least one a day. Um, I get batches of like 100 or whatever. And um, so I'm happy to bring them to you. Uh, if you like what you saw, you can certainly subscribe. Uh, buying me a coffee um, caffeinates me, but also if you feel like I'm offering you a service, uh, you can also buy a film shelf, and that will help pay for us to consolidate some storage units and get some shelving uh, in a much-needed place. Um, AVGeeks.com is a great place to go and see previously uh, done stuff, and I really... Appreciate you guys tuning in. Take care of yourself, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.